Robox fans, uh, Jaya Pataya, first of all, congratulations in a, in a brutal performance. Just talk to me about that, that your performance and the night, just assess your performance. Um, you know, felt, <laughs> felt good, man. You know, I felt strong. Um, you know, I've been waiting to get back in the ring and really show what I could do. Like I said, man, I've had all these operations and they've been upgrades for me. This, this new left hand, I've been waiting to showcase it, you know what I mean? I've only had two fights, and with Breedis, it was sort of styles make fights. It wasn't about throwing power, it was more, you know, a, a lot of punches, not the single shots. So, you know, I knew I had the power in me, and uh, I knew they were underestimating my power as well. How he kept talking about knockout, knockout. He, he, he was really underestimating how strong I was. So, you know, that's what happens. Talking about how strong you were in the third round, I think he hit you with a clean right, but you walked through that and put him down. Did you feel that punch at any point? Or was, was there no effect of that punch that you threw? Oh, man, he, he did have power, you know what I mean? It was there, but nothing really landed, um, you know, anything solid. So, you know, we just, I, I kept moving. Nothing, like, I moved with the punch, you know what I mean? I was sliding with him, so it was all good. At what point did you know that you could walk through his punches? Because it seemed very early on in the fight that you, you just walked, walked him down. It wasn't so much I could walk through his punches. I just knew he, once I heard him, he was being a bit hesitant. So I could sort of, you know what I mean, get, get in closer without having to set something up. But, you know, he's, he's always dangerous. He's such a big dude. You know what I mean? I, I don't know how much he weighed in the ring right then, but he was over 100 kilos easy, bro. Like, he was a big guy. But, um, you know, it, it's finding that distance too. Like I said in a, a previous... It, it, having the range and finding it are two different things. So, you know, I was took his range away from him. I was making him reach. That's that's what I do. It's it, it, it's not about who hits the hardest. It's, it's a science, this this sport. And I feel like that's where I close, like I create distance there is because this is what I do. Eddie, what's next? So we saw Bredes ringside and we've also seen Chris Billum-Smith. I think he called Chris out as well. What, 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 yeah, I mean, what's next? As champion, you have mandatories and, and we know that because of Jai's time out of the ring, he does have a mandatory. But also we want unifications. You know, there is a strong chance the IBF are going to enforce that fight if they do. We look to get that fight made and we do it in Australia. And he goes out and beats him again. But obviously, in every fighter's mind, they went on win every belt. I don't see, you know, I mean, with all due respect to Chris Billum Smith, with all due respect to Gula Marin, whether it's Badu Jack still has the belt, I don't see anyone beating him. But I think, you know, listen, we, we've been looking to make a play with a big name from Australia. And I said tonight in the ring, like, Tim Zhu's a great fighter, by the way. I'm not taking anything away from him. But he beat the best in the division. And he took the belt, and he took the number one spot with a ring magazine belt. And I think he's going to go and win all the belts. So this guy should be a big star in Australia and we're going to push to make that happen. But I think activity is also key. He's been out of the ring for a long time. Don't forget, Mastanak shit himself. Richard Bracourt, I won't say the same because he's, I like him, but he also went to the toilet. And, you know, Jordan Thompson stepped up. So respect to him. But again, his team was shouting out levels and that, that's what you saw tonight. But you'd see levels against all those other guys as well. Chris Billum Smith, you know, Chris Billum Smith's a really good fighter. You know, we've worked with him for a long time. But talk about a, like a guy who done well to win a world title against like an elite, I think a pound for pound fighter in Jai Patel. How excited are you having a fighter like him who has probably one of the most exciting styles in boxing? Yeah, because you know what it is, as a promoter, more more likely as a fan. Do you know how exciting it is to have a fighter that you think can beat everybody? So I know he'll fight all those guys. So all we've got to do is make it happen. But, so, but it's great sitting there in a big fight going, I've got, I've got the favourite. And he's a favourite against all those guys. And I don't think he's even touched the surface yet. You know, we've only really met this week properly. But like, I think he's going to come out of himself. I think he's going to become what, a star. You know, he's a good, honest guy that people can respect. He's an ambassador for the sport. But I think he's, you know, he's going to start puffing that chest out, but believing in himself even more. And he's a dangerous dude. Eddie, Chevron Clark had a good win today, another cruiserweight that you manage. How long do we see him on the world scene, potentially a voluntary? Chef's in the top 15, but he's just had seven fights. And we saw tonight a guy who's had 15 fights. You know, Vasil Duke is a good test, but as we saw from Jordan, it's not, it's too much of a gap between Vasil Duka and, and Jai Alpatai. So Chef needs to bridge that gap, give him four, five, six fights. Who knows? Britain would love to see him back. Maybe in time he fights another Brit. You know, he can do it, he can do it all. And we'd like to take him to America as well. So, you know, a lot of these Australian fighters want to fight internationally. He's got the opportunity to do it. He did it tonight. And what next for um, Chevron? What next for um, Jordan Thompson? 
I think he should move to heavyweight. You know, I said to him in a change room after, I went, no more cruiserweight from you. You know, like, sometimes you think that's an attribute, the size, you know, and it, it is. But also, it can be detrimental, like, if you're bringing yourself down in weight. Like, everyone was looking at the pictures at the weigh-in, and the casual fan would go, oh, there's no way Jai Opatai can win this fight. And who was the stronger guy? Who was the guy that was backing the other guy up? So, I think Jordan will move to heavyweight. Jai, you talked in the ring about it just felt like it was Jordan Thompson's night, the ring was small. Um, that was a standard ring, by the way. I thought it was a bit small. No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't, I don't it know. wasn't a big ring, Tiny small. but it was a standard ring. But, um, yeah, I did, man, you know? like Even at all the press conference, every fighter on the press I felt like I was there against them all. But it's all fuel on the fire. I love it, you know what I mean? I'm here to earn respect, and that's what I did. You know, they, they were all backing Jordan Thompson. They were all saying he was going to win, and they all believed in him. And I took that away. And I don't mean this disrespectfully, but I just, this is what I do. You know what I mean? I, I wanted this platform. I needed to come here and show you. You know what I mean? And, you know, Eddie Hearn saying we want to go to America. That's not what I want. I want to have big fights in Australia. I want to fight in Gosford Stadium, my hometown. I want to rep my home. Is that rematch against Brady? Next? Man, I'll fight anyone next. You know what I mean? Like, like uh, Eddie said, it will, if the IBF demand it, it, we have to do it. But I would love to fight for the WBO next. Eddie, did you make that fight in Australia? Which one? Brady, this rematch? Yeah, for sure. Like, you shouldn't have to travel anywhere anymore. Like tonight, he did it in a voluntary. But Brady's is a tough fight. I mean, he knows that because he had the fight first time. But you know, if, if we have to do that fight, we'll speak to the the representatives and Tasman fighters and everybody in Australia to make that fight in Australia. You spoke earlier in the week saying that Al Jai should be a mega star out in Australia. You believe now that that's what you feel like yeah, talks about? Australians, Australians are just like us, really. They like the sport, they like a beer, and they like a good time. And they like heroes in sport. If you watched, this is the problem with Australian boxing, not enough people watch the Brady's fight to understand this guy should be a national hero, right? So we're beating the drum, but now we're gonna beat the drum again. Now he's gone to England as the away fighter, really, and knocked out a Brit in his backyard. You know, so now we need to go back, we need to beat the drum again and get him a big fight. But, you know, he would also take those big fights. I know like the aim is to do it at home, but he would have no problem, in my opinion, fighting in front of 30,000 in the UK against Billum Smith if he had to. But as his team, you want to bring those big fights to his backyard. But what he did tonight was smart. The team was smart. You know, they took a quick fight on away soil. Massive profile all around. He, he, he will see tomorrow and the day after how his profile has changed after tonight, especially in Britain. Like, they, I've seen social media. People are raving about him. Like, he's a very exciting fighter. Eddie, how difficult is it to make the fights against other champions? We know Chris Billings Smith is a boxer. Uh, Gulamorian don't really know much about him as a champion. Smith might be a boxer, I don't know. Billam Smith's got a rematch with Akoli. The broadcaster doesn't want that fight. Akoli's got a contract for a rematch. It's a big fucking mess. It's supposed to be happening in November. No one even knows what's happening. Gulamorian's phoning everybody trying to get a deal. Badu Jack hasn't boxed for about a year, no longer with skills challenge in Saudi Arabia. So everything's up in the air. We can only control ourselves. But if we have the back in, we have the money, we have the broadcaster. Momentum is key. That's the key. What I don't want to do is be waiting seven months trying to land a fight and it doesn't happen. You know, he's had 14 months out. Like, little rest and then, you know, back to work. Giant. How would you sum up your time in England this week? The experience? I was good, you know. I was out of my comfort zone. You know, we come here to get a job done and we got it done. That's all that matters. You happy to fight here again? If, if needs must, obviously you want to fight at home or big fights in America, but if needs must, there's a big fight over here. Happy to come back? For sure. You know, I, I will go where the big fights are. You know what I mean? If I have to do that, you know, obviously the main goal and, and my dream would be to fight in Australia and bring big fights there. You know what I mean? It, it gives a bigger platform even for other Australian fighters, you know what I mean? It, and that's what I really pride myself on doing is giving them that platform. We, we don't have big fight nights like this in Australia, you know? Like, we got Tim Zhu, but, you know, I, I was fighting on footy players and stuff on the card. You know, that, that's what that, that was selling on our TV. So, you know, I really want to bring big fights over there, do it over there. But, you know, we sit down with Eddie Hearn, we sit down with Tasman fighters and we, and we plan the next fight. Just lastly for me, is it sort of relief after a lot of sort of uncertainty face? There was talk about that React Bull fight. Eddie mentioned about Masternet. You finally got yourself out there after a long period surgery face. Do you feel like now a, a relief, a weight off your shoulders? Um, definitely, man. It was, uh, it was a long time coming, this fight. You know, I waited a long time to get in the ring and uh, defend my title, but 
we got it done, that's all that matters. You know, we're not looking back, we're looking forward and um, now we're just gonna focus on the next one. Thank you very much.